my right. There was going to be a problem all the way around. There you go. Okay. All right. We have one box tonight. Thank you for being here with us. And um, we have questions to answer and updates to give and a little story and then our Bella story. And while I'm standing right here watching her, I took her cone off, so she is eating. So anyhow, excuse you, Patty. We have one box, and it's from Entirely Pets in California. Entirely Pets from California, all the way here to Ohio. Doesn't sound like food. Whoa, wow. Wow, we have a whole bunch of stuff. We have stuff. Who is this from? Oh, this is from Dawn S., our volunteer and webcam person and friend from Napoleon. Oh, Dawn, this is cool. Look at all this. These are those kickaroos. They're filled with um, catnip. And the, I was watching a cat today when I came in from getting Bella. I saw one of the kitties over on the side, and uh, it's really strong with catnip. Just just kicking the heck out of these. They like they like these. Yeah, we've decided we're going to try to keep catnip away from cabbage for a little while because uh, he seems to get a little bit too hyped up with that. And also, we've had these before, but I don't have any right now. It's catch a bubble for cats, and it's just something kind of, they're supposed to smell like catnip, but it's kind of fun. We just blow them here, and the cats like to chase them. Okay, these are the Pet Greens Garden, and actually, I remember now, I've forgotten. She said sent five. I think three of these were supposed to save back for her, because she wanted to try them for her kitties. But it, and actually, I think she already uses them. It's 100% organic wheatgrass for cats, dogs, birds, reptiles, and small animals. And it's a Pet Greens Garden. So I'll save these back, and we might give a couple of these a whirl. I've tried to do these. I, I can't do green stuff. I ought to have a volunteer take them, grow them, and then bring them back. I just can never. That's why at my house here, I have... I have rocks. I love rocks. I can't kill rocks. I have them all the way around my house. I don't have hardly any flowers because I can't grow them. They all die. So I grow rocks. They're all the way around. Oh, the Bonito Flake. Cool. This is uh, all of their favorites. I think almost every one of them likes them. I'm going to keep these in the fridge. You know, if I don't put them away, this is the kind that um, Octavia gets she punctures holes in it and uh, she tries her darndest best to get inside those so we either keep them in the closet or we keep them in the refrigerator you know if you think about it so Octavia gets into the clover she gets into the bonito flake she gets into the cobwebs she gets into the closet back there if we can I think she needs to be adopted and give somebody a great amount of fun Oh, we got some more of the coils, which you guys all know that the kitties love these. I got a kick out of one the other day. I saw it. I, they were batting it all over the place. And I walked out there in the office, and there was a kitty just kind of gimping. And here it got up on its leg. It was feeling sorry for itself. I didn't pull it off. I wanted to see what she did. And sure enough, she pulled it off of herself. Oh, this is nice. Pull. Uh, this is a pro, like probiotic for the kitties. It's a milk replacer for, yeah, this is a milk replacer for kittens and food supplement for adult cats t containing colostrum and naturally occurring microorganisms. This is a vet product. Um, we've got a cat now that would be perfect to try this on. I've got... It's for especially for cats that have some diarrhea. And that new kitty that we got yesterday, uh, it's that gray. And I haven't showed her to you yet. Uh, I don't think I did. Yesterday yeah. seems like eons ago. But I'll show her to you tonight. Uh, she has some nasty diarrhea. She had been down 
the road uh, for about a week and nobody really had fed her. And now that she's getting some better grade food, she's really got diarrhea. I will try this on her. Thank you, Dawn. And we have another pill pocket for our Farrah girl. And we have toys, which we love toys. Oh, wow. These are fun. Somebody last month got us some of these for the kitties. I had never seen them before. They're springy worms, catnip toys, and they do love these. They, those are really kind of cute. Uh, oh, these are the two with the tails. Kurt was playing with one of these the other day with the kitties. It was the green one. Oh, look at that. How much cuter is that for a kitty to play with? I'll give them one tonight, and then I'll... I'll, uh, I'll hold this one out for maybe a week or so. Isn't that cute? Oh, and that's really catnippy, too. What are you doing? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Wild Alaskan salmon treats. Pure natural wild salmon treats. This is going to be the kitties' um, treats tonight when we set up the playground. I always like to come out and give them some food. And uh, that's going to be it. Uh, somebody had sent us these two before. They're cat. Go Cat, Co Cat, Nip, Flippers, and they do. They just kind of bounce all over. Those are fun. Sprinkle. Oh, this is different. You know how they all like those Bonito Flakes. This is crushed dried Bonito Flakes, a healthy meal additive, a highly effective food enhancement. So we can put this, we can put this on their food. Whoa. Low in calories, zero fat. Oh, wow. They will love that. I think that's Mrs. Ohio Peepers coming in. I heard through the cam there that she might be coming. Um, we've got a couple collars, which we definitely use these, so I appreciate that. And look at this cool thing. Ball of Fury, Furry Fury. It's a rolling racing fun. Includes catnip, tap me, I squeak. Oh, I think we have to, yep, there's one of those with those pull tabs again. We love these. We hear them squeaking all the time. <laughs> Thank you, Dawn. I appreciate this. We're going to give that to him tonight. Look at this. Okay, guys. Here. Want to go get it? Want to go get it? Go get it. Go, Georgia, go. Here, you guys. You're being pesky lefty. Okay. So, let's get started. Dawn, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What a bunch of cool stuff. I appreciate it. So, somewhere under here is my stuff. Oh, I wanted to show you this, too. Clem, she just left. Um, our volunteer, Linda, her cam name is Clem. Uh, she made this. And this is really, really cool. Um, we can wear this around our belly. And if we have little kitties, you know how I was... Uh, sometimes um, the little kitties that we've been getting in, we've been stuffing in pockets in that. This will be cool. We can even wear it over our, our arm because this is stretchy or uh, around our waist. So we're going to put this in a spot where we know just poor kitties that we can um, maybe help them. So let me get started first with some of the updates and then we'll get into all the other stuff. Um, Asha, I saw, actually Kurt pointed it out to me. She was laying on the floor licking Selby this afternoon. I thought that was kind of cool. Asha's an awesome kitty. I love her. We all love her, and she's wonderful. And she's not shy at all. She loves all the kitties, pretty much all the kitties. She loves going outside now. So Asha's our, our, uh, um, our Siamese girl with the front leg off. Uh, Noogie, the one of the white with the cream color that Judy S. brought in, he was being held a lot today. I saw a couple different volunteers finding him and holding him. He's doing a little bit better. He actually was out today um, eating, and somebody on the cam I saw mentioned that he comes out at night also and plays, and he also eats with the other kitties. So we're making some headway. And today the good thing that I saw was... He did not run from the shop back like he usually does. Um, and the volunteers today has been Pam, who's here this evening. 
Greg and Judy E. were here this afternoon. Uh, this morning was Mary E. And then at 10 was Sigrid. So we had a lot of volunteers today. And then this afternoon, Connie D. came out, of course, to check on... Oh, geez. Oh, Bella. What the heck are you doing? I'm supposed to be watching you. I'm supposed to be watching her so she could eat. She mm -hmm. ate, but then I wasn't paying attention. Your mama was fat. So we'll pull her out in a little bit and show you what's going on with Bella. She's going to give me gray hair. I don't even know where I was. Um. Oh, mm, I don't know. I don't know. So we'll start over. Uh, Speedy and Apollo was supposed to come visit tomorrow, but I just got an email from Speedy that she's not going to be able to visit tomorrow. So just in case you all were aware that she was coming, um, hopefully she'll reschedule that. Friday at noon is our DCTV taping. I could not do it last week, so we're doing it this week, this Friday. And uh, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but it's really cool. Gonzo does this all the time. He takes those styrofoam plates. He does not eat them. I've showed them to a couple people, especially in the morning. And he just chews them all up. He, yes? From Speedy? Oh, really? No, no, I'm not talking to PJ. I thought I got an email. Okay. So Speedy's good to go tomorrow? Speedy's a go? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a come, I should say. Okay. I'll have to recheck my email and see who or what that was from. It wasn't from PJ. Um, I'll have to, I'll go back and double check it. So, Speedy and Apollo is coming tomorrow. So, that's cool. I'm glad. But Gonzo is the one, if you see the white plates here on the floor with the big holes out of them, that's who's doing it. Okay. My honey bunny, sweetheart of my girl. Who's going to drive me crazy? Listen, girly, i got other things. No, you're not going to wreck a whole surgical procedure. Okay, we're going to try it again while I'm watching. Just hmm. that off. Yeah, we'll watch her, see what she does. Um, Adora and Amira are out and about. You know, we took in that other cat to yesterday that gray cat that's so skinny we wondered at first if maybe that might be a sibling of Adora and Amira and now that I've had time to really look at the new cat I don't think that they are sisters Adora and Amira did not have any fleas and they did not have any ear mites this new cat does have ear mites and major amount of fleas so I, I just don't think it's possible that they are sisters um, but we she does have a name and I would like to call her CJ for our special webcam friend. I had wanted to do that a long time ago. She's going to be a beautiful girl when she gets all uh, filled in. And, um, yep, let's leave her. Yeah, let's see how she does because i got to feel very comfortable that that's going to stay on during the night. She might fuss and fight for a little She's bit. She's trying to eat. Yeah, she did, she did just eat a bowl full. Oh, boy, Bella Bella. So, CJ is her name, and I'll bring her out to show you her. We're still number one in the animal rescue site, which is awesome, awesome. I'm just finding that is astounding, astounding to me that a rescue center in Little Old Town Defiance, Ohio, can be number one. It just tickles me to no end. Um, we had some questions from people. Um, Misha Scotty and Wildfire wanted to know how Steve was doing. He did have his MRI today. We won't know the results for two or three days, what that mass is in his leg. So we're just kind of playing the waiting game. His surgery is still scheduled for Tuesday, so we're hoping that that's what it is. Um, boy, do I have to take better notes. Queen, I'll get, uh, Queen asked about Bella's anal glands. 
sometimes when a cat gets upset or uh, um, some straining or sometimes if you're brushing and you touch the anal area, all cats and dogs have these anal glands on the either side of their anal, anal area and sometimes they pop and when we picked up Bella and uh, looked at her suture this afternoon it did pop those anal glands that's what you all might have heard us talking about so no big deal they all got them sometimes they pop sometimes they don't if they do pop you want to make sure they get them cleaned up because it kind of is a stinky little thing uh, Mary to you wanted to know how we treat ringworm I always it's kind of a joke because it happens every year but uh, it October is the the month for ringworm. It seems like we get it, we see it often. Um, October is still, I don't know why, but it is. What we do here is if something comes in with, with ringworm, they get the chlorhexidine bath. It's a 4% chlorhexidine bath. And you leave that shampoo on, like, I think it's for three to five minutes. We put them in a cage, time it, and then rinse them off really well. That chlorhexidine is supposed to stop the hair damage growth. Uh, we also treat with um, a fungal ointment. We put it on the spots. The most prevalent spots for ringworm is the face, um, the ears, and the front arms here, and the toes. And the reason for that is their legs here, when they wipe, is gets it and their feet if they itch their face the back feet get it and it's just we see it the most of the time right there in the face area um, people used to clip their cats for that we don't do that we give them their bath and then we also give them a fulvacin tablet and that's a prescription drug you have to get that through your vet we've tried it before in a situation like this where we don't use the fulvacin and I don't have a really good luck with that. When we're talking mass amount of cats like this, we are, at the second we realize that we might have a ringworm cat, boy, I'm telling you, we pull out all the stops. We go whole hog on it. Anybody and everybody with even anything questionable about ringworm gets the chlorhexidine bath. Um, and there has been times that we put the entire lot of them on the fulvicin. This is one thing we never want to have happen because that fulvicin is not cheap. It sometimes takes six to seven hundred dollars to treat everybody, but I've done it in the past where we treat just like these three cats that might have it, and then then the next day it's four and five. So I just say I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to treat everybody, and it stops. We we just stop it right then and there. Um, but we do keep them on that med for a couple weeks, and that's how we do it. Now, if I was in my own personal home and I got a cat with ringworm, I would probably just give it the chlorhexidine bath and put the topical ointment on wherever that is three, four times a day. That's all I would do, um, and that's fine. But in a situation like here, boy, we, we hit it whole hog. I, Nuki asked about uh, Patricia Ann. Haven't heard anything more, so I'm assuming that that means no news. It's good news. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have got to start writing things down. Um, Hummer asked if I ever get tired of you all asking questions, and the answer to that is no way, never, ever, ever. Uh, Gwen, oh, Gwen asked about clipping toenails for kitties. These are my favorites. I got like five or six of these. This is what I use. And uh, it works really well. You know, one thing while we're talking about toenails is if you have a polydactyl kitty or cat where the extra toes are, um, I beg people when they would come into the clinic, when I, we had our clinic, to please make sure that those are clipped. Because if they are not clipped, a lot of times they will go around and embed into the pad. Our new kitty, CJ, she's a polydactyl, and her nails were horribly long, and both of her nails here were completely embedded into the pad. I clipped it way up here, and then we had to physically pull it out of her pad to get those out. So, gosh, keep those nails clipped on those polydactyls. That, that has to hurt every, every step that they take. It just makes me shudder to think about that. So that's what we use. Love them. I, you can actually get these, I think, at 
Um, Walmart's been having a better section on uh, cat and doggy nail things and grooming things, but um, Pet Supply Plus I think also has these. So they're nice. They only cost like four or five dollars a piece. And I had down here Nuki HB, but do you think I can remember what that is? You can tell I need to go to bed or something. And RHCSFO um, asked about someone watching Bella all night here. Um, trust me, I will be up several times. My door is right there. That's right beside my bedroom. All I have to do, that's why I like this pen, is to look out at her. We've got an e-collar on her right now. Because a little dickens, you remember the last three, four days that she, before we took her in uh, yesterday, she was pulling those staples and real sutures. I even put real sutures in her bum sore. Um, she was pulling them out faster, I thought, than what I could even put them in practically. So the little stinker has not shown that she's trying to get her sutures out today, but she's definitely got her nose back there and licking. And the next thing that will happen are the um, sutures will come out. So, that brings us to our dear Bella girl. She went in surgery, uh, I think the actual correct times was 1.15, and they were done at 15, or, I'm sorry, 12.15, and I got a phone call at 1.45 that she was actually then off of the table. I thought it was a little sooner than that, but I got a call in route that she had just gotten off the table. So, it was a little bit of a lengthy procedure, um, they, we were hoping, remember I said yesterday that they were going to be able to pull the incision in here up in the inner area to keep all the sutures off of the, her pressure point when she um, thumps around, but couldn't quite do that real well. But the good news is, is that the ischium part of that um, pelvis that because it's malformed, instead of being like this, like we talked yesterday, it's squished like that, her pelvis is because of the, her accident that she had when she was six weeks old. And where her stump is, the ischium was only about so far away from where that bite wound was, which just started the whole procedure. So he actually shaved and took off some of that rough spot. So it's a little concerning. Um, we won't know for sure what's going on. She's going to have to stay in that pen for at least 10 days to two weeks. Doctor wants her on three to four towels uh, thicknesses uh, to keep as much pressure tension off of that incision site as what is can be. And it just breaks my heart because she's not going to like it. But that's why we're going to use Patience's pen so that. Uh, we're all here. This is where our main activity is, and we can keep an eye on her. And I've already been telling some of the volunteers that stopped in to see her. They can pick her up and carry her around and hold her. They can do that for a long time. Just it, with or without a towel, it's okay. And if they're watching her with two good eyes, they can take um, her e-collar off. That's okay, too. And if somebody stands there, one of the volunteers stands there and watches her, we can take the e-collar off. So she will settle down. She will get used to it. Uh, it's uh, extremely important that she does not pull that out. I'll get her out here and let you see her. Hey, Akiri, do you think you could go in Thumper's room and bring CJ out and we'll show them CJ? Use the gear. When I brought her home, I had her in my lap the whole time. So this is her, her incision. He did get it pulled down a little bit, but this is why. I never really showed it to you before. Her big stump was right in here. So it's down a little ways, but you can see how close it is to where she potties at. That's why it was extremely difficult to put any padding or gauze or any kind, or diapers or any of that stuff. You know, it was all wonderful ideas, but because it's so close, I mean, it, you, you can't cover this and not cover that this part so that's what it is say hi say I love everybody out there you've got a whole bunch of people watching you and take, wanting you to be better so this is the plan she be she is to be in her pen unless she's under direct watching um, two weeks uh, probably in there ten days that's a week from this Saturday. We'll be taking our sutures out and uh, 
We'll go from there. We'll be watching her like a hawk. Not quite sure if that's going to be enough to protect it. And the other bad part is, and we've talked about this too, now in addition to a little less padding, she also doesn't have her fur here because her fur really did cushion the thump, thump, thump. So can't do much about that, but time. <laughs> Bella. <laughs> oh, she, she's not very happy with us. Makes me sad. This is CJ. CJ was found down at our local bar down there, about six, seven buildings down down the road here on Power Dam. She'd been there for about a week, uh, I was told. Nobody really wanted to feed her, I guess, because uh, they didn't want her hanging there. So, you know, no food, no hanging, but she did stay there. And she's so skinny. She's so, so thin. But now because she's getting food, uh, it's just really caused some nasty diarrhea. But she's just really resting. She hasn't really done too much today other than rest. She's kind of a medium. Well, actually, I think I'd call that long hair. Yeah, you? I think so. Yeah. Um, Not so much on her head, but on her body. Yeah, but her fur is pretty ragged. She's a real sweetheart, though. She does know how to purr. So her name is CJ, for our friend CJ. I see you've got some litter on your paw. We're going to have to clean off. But you can see here, there's her little extra paw here, or her little extra claw. And she's got the extra thummies here. And they were just awful. I felt so bad. Can I give her back to you, Carrie? Make sure you want to fight that. story. That's our new kitty CJ. Tukey obviously is feeling very good and I had a little story to tell you about. Dulcy is not here tonight. The new little kitty that Jody's taking care of um, is a long hair orange little twerp. It's just a little bitty baby. It was found by somebody that she knew and so she's going to take care of it for a little while but it was meowing and meowing and meowing and so she took Dulcie home as a uh, as a little friend for the little orange one so she'll bring her back in a few days I think it's a comfort to the new little orange one um, I you know last year you guys some of you might remember a cat that we had returned here his name was Bondo and he, he was here maybe a couple months, and then he was readopted. But initially, he came in, and we named him Bondo because of what happened to him. I'm just going to hold this up. Maybe Kurt will let me know if you can see this. This is Bondo. Is that good, Kurt? Good? This is Bondo. See his fur, his skin here? We shaved it. The story is when Bondo arrived at the rescue center, Every orifice that he had was filled with glue. It was also drawn down his back. And um, so his ears were full of glue. His, well, I hate to say it, but his hind end was full of glue, including somebody took, he was unneutered, um, took the scrotal area and glued it up over his poor bottom and um, then also poured it down his back. So uh, we had to shave all that off. His name was Bondo, and he was adopted by a neighbor down here for a couple years. They loved him, gave him a really good home, and they couldn't keep him anymore. Brought him back, which that's what they're supposed to do. And then he was readopted, and all this was all grown out. He was beautiful, but that's something that should never, ever, ever happen to a kitty. Some of you might remember Bondo because that he was back there last year. This was another. Another sad thing that had come in, but I had another good ending. This kitty here, this this is in, whoops, let me see, 2007, 2007. This is Sunday, 
And this is Bishop. These were two Persians. It says Sunday and Bishop arrived at FFRC in poor condition. They were very dirty, matted, partially shaved, and frightened. And they had been abandoned and just left in a carton. They were given baths, haircuts, good food, and clean, warm beds. When they first arrived, they just could hardly move. They were just really out of it. Nothing but matty, icky stuff. And this is what they looked like then after they were cleaned up. That was Sunday and Bishop. Aren't they beautiful? Look how gorgeous their eyes are. Those were two Persian um, Persian kitty cats, and they were they were also adopted. If I remember right, they were not adopted together, but they did just fine, and they're still in their homes today. So I think that's all we have. Um, I'm going to be out here off and on um, this evening. Now Bella's resting now, and what we're going to do here about 8:30, I'm going to give her her sleep or her. Um, Pain med for bedtime is going to make her a little bit sleepy, so that will help her relax too. And I just guarantee everybody, if she, by tomorrow she will probably be much more at ease with that cone on. She's already resting watching um, Gemini. Uh, it'll become like a second nature to her. She will even learn, probably, I think she will do this, learn how to eat with it on. But for right now, it is a little traumatizing to her. It makes me sad for her. But we got to do what we have to do to protect those sutures. So we'll do that, and we'll just give her lots of love. And she knows that she's here and that she's safe, and um, we'll take good care of her. So thank you, Dawn S., for the wonderful supplies. Thank you all for being on, and thank you so very, very much for being such a wonderful support system for us and for caring so much about Bella. That, that means a lot to me. So thank you. We'll keep you posted all the time about her. I didn't know.